Hello, now that I have your attention, no, this doesn't have anything to do with the big orange man and his toupee. That was just my clever ploy so I could ask, why do our combats get boring? Why do they sometimes feel like they're going too long or dragging on? There's a lot of advice about speeding up combat, which is all well and good, but maybe the issue is that your combats don't matter. So, how do we make combat great again? If you haven't learned by now, I like my acronyms. So we're going to focus on the goals of combat. Geography, objectives, adversaries, limits, and stakes. No, not those kind of stakes. So the goals of combat will determine how invested your players are in any given situation. Killing the orcs before they kill you is less nail-biting than killing the orcs before they escape the orphanage with a winter's supply of meals. Let's start with geography. I can't tell you how many boring combats I've been a part of, where everyone clogs up a hallway and tries to hack each other to pieces through the threshold of a door. Yay, super fun! Let's take a look at Baldur's Gate for a few examples. How many times do you get into a combat where an annoying archer is picking off your party one by one because they have the high ground? That's right, Anakin. Or you turn the tide in your favor with a few well-timed shoves that send your enemies falling into an endless abyss. The geography of combat is important. Not just the layout of the room, but its features as well. Is there verticality? Are there holes that lead to other rooms or lava, poison clouds, and acid pits? Are there objects to interact with that might explode, swing, shift, or collapse? Does the floor move or teleport each round, causing your party to choose their steps carefully? Use as many of these features as often as possible. Think up weird and interesting ideas to change the way combat is fought. Maybe, inside a wizard's tower that the party is exploring, there's a switch that shuts off the gravity on that floor, causing everyone to float slowly or to have to push off surfaces in order to engage with the enemies. Maybe the party is fighting in a sinking sand pit and they have to move to different rocks each round like a Mario minigame, or risk being pulled beneath the sand. Whatever it is, add something interesting to do in that room. Exploding barrels, a chandelier to swing off, spikes that shoot across the room like you're in an Indiana Jones movie. For the love of all the gods old and new, just don't put everyone in a 30 by 30 square room with a couple of knocked over pillars and watch them converge in the center and punch each other to death. That might be okay for your first campaign ever, but once you've played these games for a few years, it gets dull fast. All right, moving on to objectives. This one might be my favorite. How many times have you played a video game where you're fighting a boss and you have to hit something to weaken it before you can deal damage? You know what's interesting about that? Something probably came to mind immediately because those fights were far more engaging than the countless staffos and moblins you slaughtered along the way. If you grew up in the last few decades, you may have thought of a Zelda boss. So let's go with that. Remember King Dodongo? That's fun to say. His armor is too strong to take him head on. So Link has to wait until he inhales for his fire attack, throw a bomb in his mouth, and then strike when he's vulnerable. Now that is a dynamic battle. Whether it's a bannerman at the back of the orc raiding party waving a flag and granting temporary resistance to his allies, or a powerful wizard with a floating red crystal that must be cracked before he can take any physical damage. Create objectives in combat that are tasks other than walk up and hit the creature. Or maybe give them cool magic items with a few charges, like a necklace of fireballs. But make it obvious and preventable each time that they're about to use it. She raises her hand to chuck a bead of fireballs. If there's a resource in a battle that's giving the enemies the upper hand, make sure to telegraph what that thing is to your players. Make it super obvious so they immediately know what their goal is. Don't leave it mysterious at all. Just say, the mummy has five missing organs in its body. Scattered around the room are five canopic jars, each emitting a verdant glow that matches that of the mummy's eyes. Maybe these objectives grant the mummy bonus health for each jar. Maybe each jar gives the undead an extra spectral arm attack or a magic shield. Maybe it's all three of those things. Whatever the case, adding any objectives to a combat is sure to keep your players on their toes and invested in the scene. Moving on to the A of goals. Let's talk adversaries. Yeah, yeah, of course there are adversaries, it's combat, duh. The trick in this topic isn't about which kind of enemy you send to the party, but about switching things up, playing against type, and knowing what their adversaries want. For instance, if your party is exploring a cave full of goblins, don't have room after room of the stock standard mindless goons. Have surprises and specials you add to each group. 
Maybe one room of goblins are all alchemists, and they spend the fight tossing different potions at the party that cause whimsical or hazardous effects. Maybe the very next group of goblins are tinkerers, each controlling or riding a miniature mech suit with buzz saws and jetpacks. Perhaps the leader of the goblins has been watching the party through a crystal ball and has something one of them desperately wants, but threatens to feed it to their pet basilisk if the party gets too close. Do something unexpected with these familiar creatures and monsters. Have the basilisk turn everyone temporarily into oozes with its breath, and then try to drink them up rather than petrify them. Have a dragon that burrows underground then sprays freezing mist into the room through its many tunnels. How about a red-skinned troll who heals from fire and only the purest of drinks or holy water can stop its regeneration? Whatever you do, stop reading the stat block straight out of the book and only ever pitting your party against exactly what they have fought in five other campaigns. Moving on to limits. Now limits require a delicate hand to balance, so avoid making the consequences too harsh. These could be timers, chases, hostages, and collapsing buildings some outside factor that is putting pressure on the combat. Sure, you could always fight a council of rogue wizards at the top of their tower, but what if each spell they cast causes the tower to tremble and stones to loosen? That might lead to a battle where the party is trying to escape the tower while the wizards are in pursuit. Or set an oversized d6 on the table, and at the end of each round, lower it by one. Then when it reaches zero, something happens. Reinforcements arrive, the wizards explode from their flesh, revealing strange bug-like creatures with razor-sharp pincers underneath. Maybe a group of pirates has hostages and threatens to kill one each round until the party surrenders or backs away from their ship. Limits are a way to keep the action moving along. A number, a timer, turns, or even something like a sinking ship. Limits can be seen or at the very least felt. A knife to the victim's throat. The stones shaking loose from the temple. A counter ticking down until something is released by this ritual. Just make sure that your limit getting reached doesn't necessarily end the scenario, but rather raises the stakes. Speaking of stakes, stakes. Stakes are probably the most abstract and therefore the hardest of the goals to pull off. Is the bandit lord a distant relation of one of the characters, muddying the decision to save or kill her? Maybe a rival party is trying to race to the end of the dungeon and collect the MacGuffin, not caring for the innocent lives they have endangered in the process. Perhaps intervening and saving a group of helpless slaves who were meant to be sacrificed foils the king's plan, costing your party coin and loss of reputation for breaking a decree. In order for a stake to be effective, something within the combat must be on the line, a wager, something that could be lost if the party fails. Maybe a magic sword floats at the end of a crumbling bridge, but if the party goes for it, some of the bandits might slip away to warn their leader. Perhaps two important figures hang in the balance above a bubbling cauldron and the party must choose who to save. The mentor that taught your swashbuckling hero how to fight, or his lost lover. Either way, one is given up to the mad whims of the witch's spell. Do you go for the stone door leading to a mound of treasure slowly sliding closed, or toward the crumbling rope bridge full of recently freed prisoners? The stakes of a combat or scenario require choice. Something must be on the line, and something must be lost. Of all the goals, stakes are also the one ingredient that may frustrate your party, so they don't always have to be as intense as the examples I just listed. Maybe it's just a choice between a sword or a pouch full of coins and both are sliding from the dead knight into a lava pit. Stakes can be large or less significant. So remember when setting up combats to consider your goals. You don't need every goal in every combat, so don't stress yourself out by trying to force all of them to happen. Some will come naturally as you're building a scenario, leading from one right to the next. But as long as you have one or two of these things, I guarantee your combats will be more interesting, more engaging, and you and your players won't feel like they're dragging on. So I hope that my goals method has brought you some inspiration. And if you want plus one proficiency in all things tabletop gaming, don't forget to trip that like button, attack that subscribe, and grapple that bell to maximize your XP, and keep this goblin from making death saves. And as always, remember, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, have fun. I have scoured to the heart of the archives deep, and traveled to the top of the cinder cloud peaks, and forded the ever plains for the answers I see. So beware of the realms where you meddle, for the fates can be fickle. 
when the dice settle.